Hello and welcome again to the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. My name is Hobo Tom. And I realize I've not worn my DIY shirt in a while. And I think this was my third shirt. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And after this video, I would like to thank... I do have a whole lot of shout-outs, so this might be a fairly long video, I guess. Rage Trons. Thank you very much. A new subscriber. Whenever you're a new subscriber, you get a shout out. And Rage Tron, there's going to be a special video for you. It was the end of the one NXT match. You know his comp. Did he comment or subscribe? I think maybe he did both. I, I forget now. I've had a long day, folks. But. This video at the end, since you like the end of so many videos, or the beginning of so many entrances, it's only fair that I show you the end of one of them. So this video coming up at the end of this show, Ragetron, this is just for you. I do have some other shoutouts to go to. Um, at my second live stream event on Sunday, when I talked a little bit about... Get back a little bit more here. Get out of that funky reverb. You can see more of me. Again, Connor G. Thank you very much for your chats. Although, unfortunately, I cannot show any kind of live stream. That'll get me my second suspension, which is not good. I've just finally gotten back to doing live streams. And I would like to keep on doing live streams. Again, thank you very much, Connor G. Connor G, maybe on the next video I do for SmackDown, there'll be a little bonus footage for you. McBruno91 Tolkien, thank you very much. You were the very first person to ever chat with me on a live stream. On my Wednesday night, Lucha Underground at the end of that review show. There will be a special video for you, too. Thank you very much, kind sir. And SMG Martin, thank you. You made the first part of a very dull, boring pay-per-view a lot easier to go through. Even though Slammiversary did pick up at the end. Again, if you'd like to hear my reviews and see a little bit of recap, here's some of my commentary from Slammiversary. It's Impact Wrestling. Pay-per-view again. That's I think that's one of my longest videos. I think it's about th almost four hours long. Again, that's archived on my video collection. Again, please like, share, comment, subscribe. Also, feel free to leave an email at hobo and girlfriend at gmail .com. Again, thanks everyone for commenting. I think that was one of my singly single most viewed anything right now. Well, besides generic Texas woman's butt. I have a picture of two of us together. Who should I dedicate that to? I'll think about that. Someone, someone's going to have a picture dedicated to them. I'll get to see what happens if you two go to an NXT event here in Daytona Beach. Um, Raytron, I know, I also want to answer your, your question. Your comment was, when's the next event I'm going to be going to? Unfortunately, I have to work on Sunday. So I cannot make it to the WWE live show. I was kind of looking forward to that. I was going to take my nephews there. Would have been fun. I think you can get still good cheap seats for about 20 bucks. I think if the show starts at 5, it's a really early show. I'm, I'm going to double check that, though. No, I got work. I get off work at 7.30. The show starts at 8. I might make it. I don't know. I, I'm not guaranteeing anything. I have to look stuff up. Again, if the show starts at 5, probably won't be able to make it. starts at 8. Maybe that's a really long day. But I might try. I'm not guaranteeing anything for the folks. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't think that was the weird thing about the NXT show too. They did not mention when the next NXT show is coming to Daytona Beach. I think the next one I might go to is in August or September. I think in Dade City because where my girlfriend lives. But she had to do some work. Again, congratulations. My girlfriend has a new nephew. That's right. Her sister gave birth earlier today. Again, congratulations, Pam. I'll have to send out some kind of promo video for, for you two on this some, sometime. But let's start off. Let's talk about Monday Night Raw. I'll get back to all my shout outs at the end of the show. Let's start off. You have Steph, you have Vincent, Vincent K. McMahon, Hunter Hearst Helmsley, John Polovac. And Stephanie McMahon come out. And again, they're, they, they talked about they're going to have the first all woman pay per view. And I think, according to this, day, she said there's going to be like 50 women involved. They better start signing a lot of people. I don't think there's 50 women in the WWE and NXT combined. But we'll see what happens. Um, again, there's going to be, I think, according, it's going to be October 28th, I think. I guess that's a Sunday. I have to look at, oh, my calendar doesn't go up that far yet. But it's going to definitely have the NXT Women's Champion Defender Belt, the Raw Women's Champion Defender Belt, and the SmackDowns. Women's champion defend their belt as well as the finals for the May Young Classic. I know the May Young starts August seventh and eighth. I know someone did um, Nostrum. Unfortunately, I cannot make those tapings. I have to work, and actually, it's already sold out. So, if you have the tickets, power to you guys. If not, what can you do? can watch it free or I don't know I might I might try and figure something out I'm getting a little bit more computer savvy but again let's go back to Raw so again Stephanie says that Stephanie McMahon says there's going to be the all women's pay-per-view in October did I fix my chair yet yes I did yeah I remembered something at least and that it was a fuzzy warm moment between Bailey and Sasha Banks and it was okay. And again, really, there was a squash match. I don't even know who they were. It was Sasha Banks and Bailey versus two jobbers who were just there in the ring. One had red hair. I think I saw both of them at one time in NXT for some... I think it was either an eight or six women tag match. I'll have to go through my archives on that. I actually think there was one. I just forget one. I think it was before I started this show. I do remember it only because the one looked kind of familiar. Again, they just look like generic female jobbers. It was a squash match. It was a can of soup. I am working on getting more technical, te 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 technically stuff involved. Probably not tonight it's a little late again raw doesn't end until like 11 15. i have some i, I have some other technical aspects but again if you see part of my my computer pro prowess check out my slime anniversary live stream it was actually pretty neat the way i had it set up not the most professional but it's a lot better than just infinite screens then you have elias i think the whole show elias tried to put over his album and it wasn't working that well Braun comes out. He made Braun, Braun, oh, oh, by the way, Bailey and Sasha and Sasha won again. A can of suit match. Braun comes out. He makes a briefcase look small. <laughs> I mean, he, he. I think throughout the whole show, all the men kind of gave a shout out to all the all the women, and for this, Braun gave a shout out to Alexa Bliss, who was his mixed match tag partner. So that was good. KO comes out, Star really starts to heal it up in kind of an emotional way, saying, oh, Braun hurt me, not only 
physically with my elbow, but but now now my kids are scared, and all the all all kind of fun heel heart tugging stuff. Corman get comes out there. I mean, he gets whatted, which is pretty much what he's doing. And he even did, he had the what cadence going. Jinder also got whatted. He tried to have Braun do his mantra. And Braun said, uh -uh, I'm not feeling that. We're going to do my mantra. Everyone closed their eyes. Get these hands. Get these hands. Get these hands. And then starts using Sunil Singh as a weapon. Throws him into. I honestly thought this was going to lead to a match between Jinder versus Braun, but I guess not. So the next match was Natalia versus Mickey James. And, again, it was okay. It was okay. I mean, it wasn't anything spectacular. I guess they did try to sh highlight some women. Because it's only okay. You know, folks, you have a good old-fashioned graphics here. We have a ham sandwich going across the screen. And ham sandwiches are okay. Could always be worse. But it was okay. I mean, it was a good technical match. Kind of short. Alexa Bliss did get involved a little bit. Oh, wow, this shirt's doing all kinds of funky things in this chair. And these are very comfortable bungee cord chairs, but you do get waffle butt from it. And waffle back. Both look funky. And it was fun. Um, there you have Roman Reigns giving an interview. And it looks like he has a under his left eye. I forget if that's from when he got cut by accident by Finn Balor's elbow. I mean, this was actually a really good promo and he kind of broke kayfabe, or at least acknowledged kayfabe, because again, part of it says, oh, I know you guys are tired of me getting pushed. You guys are tired of me going over. What else? Um, yeah, getting pushed. Getting shoved down your throats. Or shoved, not shoved down your throats, but, but shoved in your face. I mean, it was actually pretty good. Roman Reigns, again, I, I boo the wrestler and I cheer the man. And he's not mad. Elias, again, comes out, gets interrupted by the Authors of Pain. Authors of Pain come out. They call out someone to fight them. It's worldwide. It's Titus Worldwide comes out. Again, it's kind of fun because it shows a little bit of their self-efficacy, especially from, from Titus O'Neil, when, when Authors of Pain said, oh, well, we don't trip and fall over the place. Again, he, that, that's a reference to the greatest to the greatest Royal Rumble, in which Titus O'Neil just he kind of ran down and did a whole slide underneath the ring. It was, still, it was good, and, and Titus even acknowledges the fact I mean, it's cool that he does that. The heck is wrong with the shirt? I should tuck the shirt on. It's just untucked. Technical difficulties, folks. And it just kind of led, led to a brawl. Then backstage, there's Steph, Stephanie, Kurt, Corbin, and KO. I mean, KO versus Braun. For, and until, it's still four weeks away, so there, I guess there's time for build-up. I don't know if it's going to be... Um, it's going to be KO versus Braun for the Money in the Bank contract. That should be fun. And there was a rematch between Rizango and Mojo. This was a toast match. I mean, for the most part, it was a squash match. I know Rizango, uh, Tyler Breeze got, got in some moves, but I mean, why are they having so many, so many rematches? It's not, I mean, I can see it going for a while, like Maybe after a couple of weeks. But the previous week, oh, it's been a long day. Yeah, but not, I had my boss called me in because he was sick and I woke, woke me up at like quarter to nine after I did my epic for nearly four hour live stream of Slammiversary. I don't think I went to bed until like 2 a.m. Something like that. Got five, six hours of sleep. Got a phone call. Get back to work! That's a whole other, a whole other issue.
Again, Elias came out. He got interrupted again. This time by Finn Balor. And this led to, to the Finn Balor Drew McIntyre match. It was actually somewhat good action. Um, kind of, Finn was teasing some British strong style joint manipulation, trying to bend back the thumb and fingers. Drew McIntyre. The crowd at this point seemed to be getting antsy. They they started to chant, "We want Ambrose." We want Ambrose. I, th I guess I missed the lunatic fringe. I think he's coming up, c coming back, I think, for SummerSlam. And he's going to be the little bit crazier version of himself, the true lunatic fringe. So that should be inter interesting to see. Again, you'll see my live stream whenever that happens. Figure that out, too. But Again, I'm just really happy that they're letting Finn open up his whole wrestling repertoire. I mean, this whole bingo book of wrestling moves, I mean, he, he pulled off something new again. It was the, like, a tilt world tornado DDT. And it's fun. But this was a, that's the finish, baby! Because, of course, as Finn was about ready to finish off Drew with the coup de gras, Dolph Ziggler got involved, him off the rope, and, of course, that brought Seth out. So now we have a holla, holla, holla! Tag team matchup, and this is getting old, folks. Just have them, have, just have them off the match in a tag team match. I have all four of them start as schmas and then make a tag team. Just don't throw out one match and make a new one. It's, it was old, and it's getting old. King Ross and Price stealing this, but it's, it's new era, same old. Kitty Poo. We'll say it a little bit different. It's not so much copyright infringement. And it won't get suspended again. Overall, overall, everything, when, when you're t talking about everything combined, the, the, the singles match and the tag match, I mean, it was, what? I still like this. This was a cheeseburger quality match. It was a fast match. It was a good action pace. Again, it's it's really funny, and it's really fun. I mean, there's great action. Seth and Finn got over. Again, they're letting them open up their whole wrestling book of moves they can do, and that makes it more interesting. Because at least, thank you WWE for listening to us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's not the same five moves of death over and over and over again. At least it's something different. That's good. Then, really, the highlight of Raw, and this is terrible, because this is if this is a highlight of Raw, it's pretty bad. But there was a commercial featuring, oh, Lana and Rusev. Lost Lana, who's not speaking her, her Russian. Her name's PJ, I think. She comes from Tennessee. She's like the most blonde-haired, blue-eyed American woman you've ever seen in your life. And they did a commercial for Dollar General and Snickers. It was funny. It broke kayfabe. Kayfabe is dead. Long live kayfabe. The king is dead. Long live the king, I guess. Oh, I know why I put this there. I mean, Dolph does make the best hot tag. I'll give him that much. He can sell everything. Again, they're, they're, they're good matches. I just wish it started this way. What else can you say? Yeah, it was a cheeseburger match. Bobby Lashley did a promo. And he said this one line with a smile because he, he was getting ready to go to SummerSlam. And he might have been punished for this in the main event. I mean, who knows what what goes through the mind of Vince McMahon or, or anyone else in Gorilla. But he ended his promo with, there's going to be no sleep till Brooklyn. And if if that was scripted, that's a ter this terribly worst scripted thing I've heard in a long time. If it was impromptu, I could somewhat understand it, I guess. I mean, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't great. It, 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 I'll, I'll tell you what, it didn't make me chuckle. 
So if it puts a smile on my face, it's okay. And again, his delivery, and he said he kind of laughingly as he went out the door. <laughs> like, I mean, no sleep till Brooklyn. <laughs> but I think, who writes this stuff? Then you had the Ember Moon versus Liv Morgan match. I mean, this this was okay. Again, you're kind of getting into all these rematches. I think this is the third match they've had. And uh, Sarah Logan wasn't there. I forget what they said she was doing. Maybe some Viking reenactment. Who knows? Ruby Riot's recovering from something. I forget if it's a shoulder or like a knee. Knees are bad. Shoulders it can be worse. Thing is, uh, this was a Kanesu match. Again, I'm just kind of... I actually can't believe for all of how terrible Liv Morgan is as, as a wrestler that she was trained by Skandar Akbar who to me is probably the second greatest heel manager in, in all of the known freaking universe. But everyone knows number one is Bobby Lashley. Oh, you missed it. Also on my live stream, um, SMG Martin and I were discussing a little bit who are the top five pro promo guys in WWE. And just to recap things, and we you could debate this forever. Number one, and again, this is only my own list, is the Macho Man. Number two, Ric Flair. Three, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Four, The Rock. And five, Chris Jericho. I'm sure one of those, if not all of those, are somewhere on that list. Again, feel free to comment and tell me which ones are, who's on your, who's in your top five. And then Elias finally got a chance to do his singing. Again, well, Ember Moon won. I guess it was, it, was, it, was, it was fast. Just over and over and over again. It's boring. Puts you to sleep. And again, he had Roman, he had Elias come out, he got to sing a song, then he, re then he realized he was in, in Cincinnati. Again, it's not as bad as Cleveland. But he, he was singing, then he finally realized where he was. Oh, you want to make an appearance too? Let's see here. Oh, I got you. There you go. Special appearance by Cheese by the Cat. But again, this led to the Roman. So again, he realized he was in, in Cincinnati, ran down everyone. And then Bobby Lashley's music hit. Roman Reigns came on. Oh my gosh, this was a good match. This was a surf and turf quality match. And again, SMG Martin and I were discussing the talents or lack thereof of Roman Reigns. I'm of the opinion Roman Reigns has the ability. He has the ability to put on great matches. Again, if he's in someone that he can work with, AJ Styles, Samoa Joe. I mean. If he was in there with Shinsuke Nakamura. He was in there with Bobby Lashley. That, this was actually a really good match. Um, Hunter tried to push him a little bit. Brock Lesnar, eh, he, he's a flatliner. I mean, other people aren't, aren't as good a pairing for Roman. But again, if Roman has a, has, a, has a good partner to work with, he puts on freaking amazing matches. And again, it, was, it started off as a good striking match. The crowd did try to take over a little bit. Again, we want Ambrose. But then eventually they, they really got into the match and there was split chance for Let's Go Roman, Roman Sucks. When have you ever heard Let's Go Roman? And again, I think the thing that killed it a little bit is, is that there was a commercial about Ohio. Boo, Ohio. Boo, Ohio. M, go blue. M, go blue. I bleed maize and blue. Michigan born and Michigan bred, and when I go, I'll be Michigan dead. That's neither here nor there. Again, it was brawl time. Again, it was good. I mean, Roman had one new move. It was awesome. I even forget what it was. It just shocked me. I'm like, I have not seen, and that, I haven't seen a full Nelson used in a wrestling match in a long time. Bobby Lashley was busting out submissions left and right. This was good. There were good false finishes. Overall, it was a good, really good quality match. And that's the end of the show. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching.
again because Rage Tron's like the beginnings of the matches. Going to show you the end of a match. Again, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Uh, stay tuned. Again, for those of you who I mentioned, Rage Trons, your thing's coming up in seconds. Connor G, I'll post something for you. McBruno91, Tolkien, you're going to get something as well. I have to find something extra special for SMG Martin. And something else. Again, thank you, everyone. Again, like, share, comment, subscribe. Feel free to email hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Thank you, guys. Bye.